following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Holy and blessed be the unutterable name of the Lord. Baruch Hashem Adonai. The topic of this lecture relates with the word. which uh, is symbolized in the rune Hagal of the Nordic alphabet. And which we find in many religions, philosophies. We place this rune in relation with the Aztec calendar. As you can see in the graphics, the rune Hagal is represented with the letter H <coughs> and the X with a vertical line in the middle or a horizontal line, could be either way, which forms the six-pointed star which we find in many religions. We find a six-pointed star that in Hebrew is called the Star of David in the Tibetan pantheon, Hindu pantheon, and obviously in the Nordic pantheon with the rune Hagal. The H of Hagal is a vowel. In esotericism, we study the letter H as well as the M and the S as vowels. What are vowels for us? Are the perfect sounds of the mouth. A, A, E, O, U, M, S. Which is the H, a deep sigh. And this is precisely what we find symbolized, as uh, you can see in the center of the Aztec calendar, the rune Hagal, represented by an X or four points, and uh, the face of Tonatiu. The name Tonatiu is the name of the sun of this root race. 
It's in the very center of the Aztec calendar. <clears throat> and uh, with two paws that are squeezing two human hearts. Those are, of course, forming the horizontal line of the rune Hagal. Above the face, we find the rune Thorn, which is also called Dorn, which is willpower. This rune Hagal in the Aztec calendar, in the Nahua language, is called the Nahuiolin. The Nahuiolin, which means willpower and movement. Willpower is represented by the apex, the triangle above the head, which is a form of a thorn. And the movement related with the rune Hagal, which is the X by a transversal line, the horizontal line, which forms the six-pointed star. As you can see, of course, uh, the star of David is represented in many ways, but here is very hidden, as you can see. You can see the paths by the four points of the, the rune are forming a six-pointed star. And above the, the thorn, which is willpower, above the head. Why is it above the head? Because in the pineal gland, we have the atom of the Holy Spirit which uh, in Hinduism is called Shiva. In mythology, this Shiva, or the Holy Spirit, is represented by Neptune. That's why in astrology it is stated that Neptune governs the pineal gland. The pineal gland the hormones of the pineal gland are directly related with the hormones of the sexual glands. The waters, the human waters. That's why Neptune is uh, stated is the god of the ocean. Not only move the forces of the ocean or the planet, but in our own particular planet called human body, the forces of the pineal gland move the sexual energy, the waters of Genesis, the genes in our sexual organs. This is very important to understand because uh, we had to study the relationship of the sexual force with the pineal gland, and with the word. And this is enclosed, or hidden, with this marvelous rune Hagal, which in order to explain, we took the symbol of the rune from the center of the Aztec calendar, in order for you to see how this is marvelously represented there. If you observe the face in the middle, the fifth sun, Tonatiu, has an open mouth. And from his mouth is protruding the triangular tongue, or the tongue in a triangular shape that represents the three primary forces that we always talk about in relation with the tree of life. If you are familiar with the tree of life, you know that it is represented by the ten sephiroth. So the first triangle of the tree of life is what in Kabbalah are 
uh, is called uh, the triangle of Keter, Chochma, Bina. Translated into English, it is the crown, wisdom, and intelligence, or understanding, or sometimes comprehension. So this triangle is above, of course, is what the, also the, the rune thorn represents, the apex above represents that triangle. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in Christianity. But the tongue of Tonatiu is showing how the three primary forces create through the word. Remember that it is written in the Gospel of John, which in parentheses, John is written with an H in its name. That H of John is precisely the rune Hagal, which symbolizes the breath of God. When you want to make the sound of the H, you just emit a, a, a sigh. And that is a symbol of God. Now, this H in Kabbalah is represented by the letter He. The letter He is the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And of course, the letter He of the Hebrew alphabet the H is written or spell with two Hebrew letters in order to spell He you had to write the letter Aleph next to the letter He and this is how you spell it He which is very profound and significant element that we must understand. Why? Because the Aleph, which is the A, the letter A, is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet in any alphabet. We gave a lecture related to the letter Aleph, but we had to synthesize that the letter Aleph symbolizes the three primary forces represented in the tongue of Tonatiu and in the rune thorn above the head means that above the head that will expresses us through the word in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God the Logos is a trinity. First Logos, second Logos, third Logos. This is called the Logoi in plural. The three primary forces that create. This is the Holy Triamatsikamno. So take word, which means the law of three, the law that creates. So as you see, the law of three expresses us through the tongue, which represents the word. And the letter He, which is the breath. The first sound that any baby emits when he's born is Ah! But behind that ah is the breath of the hay or the H. Ha. Because first, breathe the air, put it into the lungs, and then the sound of the A comes from its lungs. But together with that sound is coming the breath, 
the wind. It is very important to understand that because many books state that in the beginning was the word. Even the Popol Vuh states that Tepe Hukumats, the god which was too, emitted the sound in order to create the universe. And the first thing that that god em emitted in order to create was earth. And when he or she together pronounced earth, the earth was there. Of course, that is a process. It's not like we re uh, mechanically, in an instant, in a second. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that if we study the larynx, the throat, which is related with the rune Hagal. Because from it, from the breath of God, from the Logos, from the Word, comes everything. In other words, all the letters. That's why the book of Genesis states, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You see the word earth is there? But in the word, the heavens, in Hebrew, if you disclose the letters, you read Hashem Im means the name within the ocean, which the Hindus call the Akasha, which is that substance that is in the space. So when that substance, which is in the space in the universe, here's the name, which is Hashem. You see, Hashem. In Hebrew, when you say you pronounce the letter H or H, means that, because from it emerges everything. The heavens, Ha Shamim, but also means the name within the ocean of life. And when that name in the ocean of life is uttered, then the earth appears. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Those heavens are the power of the rune Hagal that we are explaining here. And of course, the He, or the letter H, the Hagal, comes from the glottis. <coughs> The glottis is that membrane that we have in the back of the tongue, which is like a little mouth. If you observe in a graphic the glottis behind the tongue, is the very top of the larynx, where we find the vocal cords, and resembles the feminine sexual organ. If you make a similitude of the throat with a feminine sexual organ, you will discover something amazing. For instance, the words that I am emitting right now are going into your ears. So from the larynx through the space out of your body, from where the sound enters into your ears, from the larynx to the ear, there is a tube. Each ear has a tube, which is called the Eustachian tubes, which are uniting the ears, the nostrils, with the larynx. You can see that in any anatomy. Those Eustachian tubes are similar to the fallopian tubes. And the uterus resembles like the larynx. And the opening of the glottis 
like the very entrance of the sexual organ in the feminine sex. Obviously, the vagina resembles the mouth. That's why we are stating Gnosticism that the mouth is a feminine organ that creates the word. See the similitude? If we analyze that, we arrive at the conclusion that the uterus, through that opening of the vagina, receives the sperm the sexual organ. But the ovum that descends from the fallopian tubes receives the sperm in order for it to form the first germinal cell that will become the fetus that will evolve, developed in nine months within that womb. And this is how the body will appear, the human body, eventually from that feminine organ. In the same way, we have to understand that when the Bible says in the beginning God created with the word, doesn't mean in one instant. That is a process as well of the sound that goes into the throat. That's why in Kabbalah we place the mysterious Sephira Da'at, which means knowledge, in the throat. Because that is the power of God. The power of the Word is with God. And He was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So then, that's why you see in the very center of the Aztec calendar that triangular tongue, which represents the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the three logos, creating through the breath. And of course, the rings or, or the ears are adorned by uh, earrings which are, of course, also symbolize that power that enters, which is the sound that enters into the head in order to make the word flesh. Be, 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 uh, behold, beneath the nostrils, you find that other adornment, I mean, other device that symbolizes the power of the breath. You all know that the nostrils and the ears are connected. If you want to blow through your ears, you just close your nostrils and blow with your closed mouth. And then the ears go through your ears. Right? Because there is a cavity there that unites the nostrils, the eustachian tubes, with the larynx and the lungs. We talk extensively about that power of the letter H, the Psi, the breath of God, in the letter Aleph. And that is related with the son of Taurus. You see about, because above is Arius, represented by the rune Thorn. Arius, which is willpower, the warrior of Mars. And here in the throat, Taurus, which is represented by a feminine force, Venus. Because the larynx, the throat, is a feminine organ through which the word, the sun, become flesh or the universe. Now, if you analyze the zodiacal signs, we find that after Taurus comes the symbol or in the sign of Gemini, which are the couple, the twins, represented, of course, by Adam and Eve. 
or by father, mother. You see, Adam Nin, father, mother. And where that father, mother, Adam and Eve is represented? The Yod is with power. The He is always feminine, the throat. The Vav is Adam, the man. And the He against is the woman. That's why the holy name of God has two He's or two H's in Latin. Yod, He, Vav, He. Which is the famous Tetragrammaton. Yod, He, Vav, He. You see, two He's. Because even in the human organism, we have the hay here in the throat, and we have the hay in the sexual organs. Even though in the sexual organs, the letter H is divided in two sexes. But here above, the two forces act in the word. When you are talking, you are acting with the two polarities, the two hays above of your hay above hay, which is translated in the Bible as Jehovah. So Jehovah, yod Chava or yod Chave, is a duality which manifests in the world. So yod He, Father, Mother, Vav He, Adam, Eve, or main woman. So, this is how you understand why the mystery of creation is related with the rune Hagal, with a six-pointed star. Because the one that performed this transformation in the human body is the other will. We have two wills here in ourselves. The will of God, which is above, and the will below, which is in the heart. That will below is called Tifereth, beauty, which is in the very center of the tree of life. Tifereth, beauty, is represented by the human soul, the psyche. Part of that human soul is inside of us, is the essence. And is the sixth sephira of the tree of life, which is represented in the rune Hagal in the center of the Aztec calendar by the hearts, which the two parts are squeezing. These two hearts are the duality, Adam, Eve. Because in the sign of Gemini, you find that it's always represented by the two, dual, I mean the duality, the two men and women, the twins. And the sign of Gemini is related with the shoulders, with the arms, with the hands, and with the lungs. So you see now how is intimately related. The lungs, of course, are related with the breath that we take from the nostrils. And with the breath, the air, the wind that we use in order to express the knowledge that of the throat. But of course, the two hands squeezing the hearts, human hearts, is showing us that we have to exercise willpower. And for that, we have to kill the evil will, represented by the heart, by the soul, which is also or only willing to do evil things. Or, in other words, things which are not related to the spirit. 
We are always willing to do things in this physical world related with materialism. But few of us are ready to do things of the spirit. And for that, we have to sacrifice our hearts. Means our own will. When you sacrifice your heart, your own will, for the will of God, then you understand that prayer of the Lord when he's kneeling in the Mount of the Olives and with the hands like this, making the room thorn, pointing to heaven and saying, Father, if this is thy will, thy will come to me. But not my will, but thine be done. You see, two wills there in that prayer, which he is doing with his throat. Because this is precisely the organ that we use in order to talk with God. And this is God. God expresses itself through us. Through the word. Remember that the word became flesh. In the body of Jesus. In the body of Krishna. In the body of Quetzalcoatl. In the body of Mohammed. In the body of all of those masters. That incarnated the word. Samael on the or incarnated the word. Which is a mystery, of course. This is how you see how uh, the four elements fire, air, water, and earth. Represented in the X are controlled by the will of God when through the duality Adam and Eve we fortify the will of God in us. How do we fortify the will of God within us through the will of Adam and Eve represented in the heart, when we sublimate the sexual force, which is related to the pineal gland, when in the sexual act, the couple, the twins of Gemini, transmute with their will, with their hands, that represents the will of God. The paths of the tiger represent the will of God, which expresses in the sexual organ. The will of God expressed in the sexual organs is called Lucifer in Latin. In Hebrew, it's called Shatan. And of course, uh, in the Aztec and Mayan symbolism, it is represented by the tiger. Also, in the Hindu pantheon, you see how Shiva, which is related with the pineal gland, is always seated on the skin of a tiger. Meaning that the, all the strength that he is receiving, that he shows in the trident, symbol of the trinity as well, is taken from the paths, the hands. That when they are united in the sex, are Adam and Eve in the sexual act. But for that, the couple, Adam and Eve, needs to learn how to sublimate the fire of Lucifer. The devil in us. That's why there are few initiates. Because most of the people, when they go to the sexual act, they throw the fire out of their bodies through the orgasm. And that's why the paths of the tiger represents the animal force. The will that we use in the sexual act in the wrong way, in the animal way. But if that will is a squeeze, squeezing the heart, means that you are 
sacrificing your own self-will, your own human will, represented by Tiferet, in order for the will of God to manifest through you. And that's precisely the great symbol of the path that represents the horizontal line of the X of the rune Hagal. And of course, in order to perform this marvelous transformation, <coughs> you need to use the throat. That's why it is stated that the sexual act is the most powerful way to pray to God. Because God expresses itself through the throat and through the sex in the sexual act. Unfortunately, the animal, the only thing that knows is to fornicate through the sexual organ and through the throat to express filthiness. So we have to learn how to use the word in the right way, in the very sexual act, and to transmute, to sublimate the libido. That's the initiation that we represented there in the very center. Because the X is the cross. And that's why the Star of David, as we explain in other lectures, is represented by two triangles. The upper triangle is the man. The apex is the phallus. And the lower vertex below represent the testicles. So that's the man. While the woman is the opposite triangle. The ovaries above and the uterus below. So, the six-pointed star united represent the sexual act. Of course, the symbol of other things. But that is the basic in relation with the rune Hagal. That's why when men and women are in the sexual act, the two triangles below are united. And in order to sublimate the force, they have to pronounce the word. This is the triangular tongue of Tonatiu showing us in order to control the four elements of nature. Now listen. The rune Hagal is related with the forces of nature. The physical body is only the inferior part of the vital body. In Kabbalah, the physical body is Malkut. It's called the kingdom. The lower sephira, or the tree of life. Above it is the sephira Yesod, which is the superior aspect of the physical body, called the vital body. So, in the vital body, which if you develop a little bit of clairvoyance, you can see that around the body is the aura. That vital body is made of energy. It's called also ethereal body. This ethereal body is made of five ethers. From the root of our nose to the top of our nose, we find the ether akash, or the akasha ether, which is that primordial water that we told you in the beginning, the word is appearing. 
That word that is hidden within the word, the heavens, in the book of Genesis. The heavens means Hashem Im, the word in the ocean. That ocean is the Akasha. There is with Hashem. You see the word Ha, the H, is the name floating in the waters. In the beginning, the Spirit of God was hovering on the waters. Those are the waters. Here, in relation with our physical body, is the brain. We have those waters called Akasha. And the mantra related with that head, that Akasha is H A Ha. Similar precisely to the name or the spelling of the letter He. He and Aleph. In Sanskrit, of course, in Hinduism. So when you said ha, 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 vibrates here in the brain. And the elementals, the souls which are related with those waters of the space are the, called the puntas of the ether. The puntas of the ether. Which are like sparks of light within the ocean of life. You can see those sparks of light in the ocean of life. If you concentrate your sight and see the atmosphere. They always shine sparks there in the atmosphere when descending. This is all, not only in the atmosphere but even in the space. Because the whole space is that akasha. So then, the God, according to Hinduism, that vibrates in our physical body, or better said, in the vital body, because the vital body in us is a symbol of that Akashic water, where the physical body floats. Everywhere you move physically, that water called vital body or ethereal force moves with you. If we take that ethereal force from you, the vital body or the ethereal body, your physical body will die, will collapse in instantaneously because it's the very life that sustains all the elements in your body. Now, the God, or better said, the angel, if you want, that controls these forces in your body is called Sarashiva. Sarashiva, which of course is Shiva. But Sarashiva related with those forces of the ether. Below Sarashiva, we find Ishvara. But Ishvara controls the forces of the air called Vayu. In Sanskrit. And by you, the air controlled from the root of your nose to your heart. Isn't it significant? You find that the heart, from the heart to the root of the nose, is the air, and it's precisely what we're talking here the hearts squeezed by the paws, the air, which precisely represents in the mouth, the nostrils that we breathe, really with Hagal. That means that every prayer that you perform, whether from Hinduism, Hebrew, China, or any other religion, is always pronounced through the mouth, through the word. Because it's through the word that we communicate to God. Remember that Jesus of Nazareth, the incarnation of that word, Cosmic Christ said, no one can go to the Father but through me. This is, this is an esoteric statement. 
People think that he's talking about his own personality, his own physicality. And that's wrong. He is saying it with his throat. The word of God is expressed through himself, through the mouth. And that word is precisely that says, no one go to the Father but through me. Some people say, no, this is wrong because Jesus is not the only one, etc. But they don't understand that Jesus represents the Logos, incarnated, made flesh. So when you kneel, whether you are a Muslim, Taoist, Buddhist, and you start praying, you are uttering mantras, words, with your mouth, which is the Logos, which is Christ, which is the song that is coming from the feminine throat. Because the word uttered through the throat is the Son of God. If we have filthy words, we are polluting the Son of God. That's why in the beginning was the word. So through the word, to the prayer, you are communicating to your God. Whatever your God is. Whatever you believe. And it is through the sun. The war expressed through the larynx. Which is the hay. The divine mother. That manifests. That's why we Gnostic say. No matter what your religion. If you want to communicate with God. The sun is the only way. Which is the Logos. But people don't understand. They think that we are talking about Jesus. The man that came 2,000 years ago. That through him you had to do it. Or to believe in him. As a fundamentalist talk about. They don't understand. The hidden word within the body of Jesus. That word was also in Krishna. And in many other masters. And that's how you understand what the word is. And is related with the heart. With the breath. With Vayu. Ishvara. That's why Ishvara says that is precisely the origin of the universe. It is associated with Vishnu in Hinduism. Which is the Son, the Word of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Do you see the beautiful of this? And the mantra that you pronounce in order to express or to manipulate the forces of the air is Ya. Why A always? Because the A symbolizes the Trinity. Ya. I, here is ha and here is ya. So ya, ha are the mantras related with the air and with the ether. In the physical body, not in the vital body, but physical body, that ha which vibrates in the vital body in the brain, relates to the Akashic waters, as we explain in the sexual organs. That's the relationship of Shiva with the sexual power. But of course, Ya, Ishvara, is related with the heart and with the breath. We explain in other lectures that when you breathe, you put the air in your lungs and the lungs purify the blood of your heart in order to make it purify blood. It's a system that we always do physically, even if we don't intervene. So that you find the relationship of the air with the heart, with the lungs, with Gemini. The duality. Because we have two lungs. So then. 
This marvel will rule Hagal with the A, A, which is the H in Aleph pronounced by Tonatiu, relates with the power of the elements in the vital body as we are explaining. From the heart, through the uh, sexual organs, or until the sexual organs, we find the element a a fire. That fire is related with all the digestive system. Shin in Hebrew, fire. That digest the forces that we have in the solar plex. Ra is the mantra. Letter R in A. Ra, which remind us the sun Ra in Egypt. So that Ra is related with that archetype that control the fire in our body, which is called Rudra. R-U-D-R-A. Rudra. So Rudra is the fire in an organism. That's why in this area it's called the solar plex. As you see, solar means with fire, with solar force, the fire of the sun. Then we find that from the coccyx or the sexual organs, through the knees, we have the element water. So the element water has this archetype in the vital body, which is an intelligence that we, learn, we have to learn how to use. It's called Narayana. So Narayana in Sanskrit is precisely Naa, which is water, the forces of the water, in relation with our sexual force, with the legs as well. Femurs. And uh, the mantra or the syllable that vibrates there is va. Va. Observe that in order to write va, which means and in Hebrew, you write it with the letter vav, which is always related with the sexual force. Vav in the spinal column. Va. So from the knees to the feet is the earth. Whose God is Brahma, which represents all the body. But from the in the vital body, from the knees to the feet is the earth. But remember that the earth represents the bones, the muscles. All the tissue that we have in the physical body is earth, which is Brahma. That, according to mythology, the Hindu mythology says that Brahma emerged from the silver uh, navel of Narayana. Which is, of course, uh, uh, the forces of the earth in our physical body, coming from the sex, or the sexual force, as a symbol. So this is how the vital body is divided. Earth, with the mantra is la. The L and the A as well, you see, always. Because every mantra has that vibration of the trinity. 
la va ra ya ha and this is how you have to understand uh, the symbols are represented in your physicality. There is another symbol there that you find, which is uh, the physical body performing the rune hagal, or showing how the rune hagal is performed through our physicality forming over the six-pointed star. And of course, the geometrical sign in the left of that symbol represents the geometrical forms that comes from the word. And from, through the word and through the rune Hagal is how you control the forces of nature and the universe in your body. Remember that your vital body, which is a superior aspect of your physical body, has the five forces, the five ethers. From the feet to the top of the head, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. So this is how we, through the rune Hagal, Take advantage of the forces of nature in our physicality through the vital body. Of course, according to Hinduism, the ether is controlled by Indra. The air is controlled by Paralda. The fire is controlled by Acne. The water by Varuna. And the earth by Shangam. We call it Gob as well. Gob. So those are angels, gods or divas, because there are many of them that are in the atmosphere. Every religion talks about Angels or divas or gods, Elohim, as you whatever you want to name them, which are controlling the forces of nature. So when you perform the rune Hagal, you put in contact your archetypes that we already named Sudha Shiva or Sala Shiva, Ishvara, Rudra, Narayana, Brahma in relation with the forces of the angels or whatever angel you are going to invoke whatever your religion is because every single religion worshipped the gods whether you call it angels or saints or masters but every religion has their own masters you find for instance in the Aztec uh, uh, part of this lecture the Aztec pantheon that the god of the water is called Tlaloc. The god of the fire is called Huehuetotl. So there, with Silopochtli, the god of the beauty and the earth and spring, is worshipped there among the Aztecs in Mexico, among the Mayans, with Silopochtli, Tlaloc, Quetzalcoatl. And uh, many other angels related with the elements of nature that you find in every pantheon. So, if you study Christianity, you will find also the angels related with the, with the four elements that you need to uh, worship in order to put your word in activity. Because every single thing in nature is geom geometry. I remember, for instance, an experience that I had out of my body, with my internal bodies. I saw the current of sound within the Akasha. The Akasha is that space outside and the current of sound 
that, wa that was emerging from that, which of course, if you see physically, is like emptiness, a current of sound coming from emptiness. But that current of sound is the breath of God, which is the Hagal, the H, the Hey. And that is called precisely the current of the sound. And when I observed that current of force, of energy, Akashic force, I saw geometrical figures in different shapes, triangles, squares, hexagons, pentagons, etc. Like the grains of salt that you see in a salty river that is going into the ocean. That salt is geometrical and floats in the water. This is how you have to understand, physically speaking. But there, in the superior dimension, that sound, that salt, which is the geometrical figures, were playing a symphony. That symphony is the seventh symphony of Beethoven. Of course, this is what I heard. I'm not saying that only that symphony is played in that current of sound. Every single symphony is a different river. So Beethoven brought that sound into here and placed it into the paper. The nine symphonies are coming from the space, from the nine spheres of the cosmos. It was so amazing to hear the sound of the seventh symphony of Beethoven coming from a current of sound. Now, scientifically it's explained because if somebody is recording this lecture in a tape recorded, and if that tape recorded is observed in a microscope, they will see that the words that I am pronouncing are recorded in that tape with geometrical figures. And this is how when those geometrical figures are placed in the tape recorder, they repeat the same thing that I am saying. Thus, of course, scientifically is explained that the word and the geometry is the same. Every single geometrical figure is a letter. It's a symbol. It's a sound. When you combine those letters or archetypes, as we call, you form syllables. And when you combine the syllables, you find words, phrases. And that's why when God said earth, the geometrical figure took time, of course, in the space in order to make that concrete. Because God created with the word Hashem, the name. This is how we have to understand this. So when we are pronouncing a ha, ya, ra, va, la, and putting our attention and concentration and imagination and what we are doing, what we are asking, what we are praying, the word brings the forces related with those vibrations to our body. Or when we are transmuting the sexual energy, we bring the forces of God in us. God is force and forces. God is not a person, but intelligence that moves the world. And that's why in that way, we are similar to God. Unfortunately, we don't create like gods, because the only thing that we create is through our psyche, negative things. Because we fornicate. We don't know how to utilize the sexual force in the way that God does it. In order to create beautiful things, like nature, 
observe. Every tree, every flower, everything in nature is a crystallization of the word. You can see that in a microscope now. And the very depth of anything, this geometry, is the word, the sound. Every single thing emits a sound. And those are what we call the vowels. That's why in the Nordic alphabet, the rune Hagal encloses all the mystery of the word. All the way in which we communicate. Not only in this physical world, but in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh dimensions. Because the word encloses all of that. And this is precisely what we have to visualize when we pronounce the word. And that's why this rune is marvelous. The Master Samael on the Or teaches in this room six mantras related with the rune Hagal, the six pointed star. This is written in the book of runes in the rune Hagal. The mantras are Achak Chukanak. Ak Churaksan, Ak Noya, Siraxi, Iwaya, Hiraji. Or Hiraji. Pronounced with faith. Those are Mayan mantras that bring through the rune Hagal whatever force you are invoking from the elements. The Master Samael on Veor explains in his book. Magic runes, the following. He says, if, if you are a twice born, meaning if you created the astral, the mental, and the causal bodies within you, you are a twice born, or a newborn. If you annihilated your ego, that means that you don't have. Lust, anger, pride, vanity, greed, laziness, gluttony, etc., etc. And if you sacrifice yourself for humanity, then, brother, you are an elected one. So go, says, to the beach and trace the rune Hagal with your hands on a rock. The X with a traversal line, which is a six-pointed star. There, then after that, pronounce the mantras. And invoke the boat of the swans. Then the Divine Mother Nature. Call her Athena, call her Mary, the virgin of the sea. Call her Adonia, the mother of the earth, will come to you and ask her to take you from the third dimension and penetrate into the fourth dimension to every land you want to go. To the temples of the White Lodge. There you will learn what we, the resurrected masters, know about the Word, about Christ. There you will find the temple of the Grail with the Templars, the temple of the masters of the four dimensions. You can go to Shangri La or Shambhala. Or any enchanted land of the four dimensions. Anyhow, if you are not a selected one, if you are a beginner, said the master, then just do the following. Trace the rune Hagal in a paper 
in a white sheet. In the same way. And then invoke the forces of the elements. To come unto you and to assist you. In order for you to receive the help of the gods. Invoke the gods of the Aztec pantheon. Or the gods of the uh, uh, Hindu pantheon. Or Christian pantheon. Or Muslim pantheon. Or Hebrew pantheon. No matter what. Just invoke them. Call them gods. If you don't like, call them angels. Masters. Divas. A superior being that controls the forces of nature. Through the Rune Hagal. Invoke them. And help yourself. Vitalize your body. Your physicality. Your mind. Ask whatever you want to ask to those gods. To do in your physicality. In your psyche. In your mind. In your spirit. Whatever you need. And pronounce the mantras. Every time that you invoke a single one. And pronounce the mantras. That you know already. Related. With every archetype in your vital body. That's why in other lectures. We taught you that. The rune Hagal physically. Is done when you raise your arms. In this way. And at the same time you are turning. Turning like a wheel. If you remember. The dervishes, dervishes, the, the whirling dervishes that turn like that, like in the cross, only in that way. Well, the same way the Rune Hagal, with the difference that you are extending your arms up and down, up and down, as you see in the graphic that is shown in the website exactly like that with that you are of course exercising and turning in putting into activity your chakras the forces that you have in the body clockwise and do not make the intellectual mistake of trying to comprehend that with the intellect about the turning around because when an aeroplane or that we don't use in this time but still there are some aeroplanes that utilize the helis whether in front or in the wings the helis are turning in one direction but the aeroplane is going horizontally to wherever the plane wants to go it doesn't mean that because the helis are re turning in circle that the plane has to turn and circle around in the space, in the air. That will be absurd, right? In the same way, understand that the chakras are rotating in one way, even if your body is rotating in other way. Because the chakras is one, are one thing, and the body is another thing. Otherwise, we fall into confusion. So the chakras rotate positively when you turn physically clockwise. No counterclockwise. That's the way. And of course, as you realize, if you comprehend, that the superior part of your physical body, there you find the five ethers. And this is how you understand that the rune Hagal, the six-pointed star, the star of David, is how the forces of nature are controlled in order to form in order to make of you a microcosmic star. Because the five ethers are the same five tatuas that we run Akasha, Vayu, Tejas, Apas, and Prithvi. These are called in, in Sanskrit. The five tatuas are in relation with the five pointed star, the pentagram. But they are controlled and formed from the six-pointed star. And that's why many Gnostics, many initiates, do not understand that from the six-pointed star emerges the fifth-pointed star, the pentagram. So, 
both are interrelated because this is how the pentagram, which is the perfect man, the perfect Adam, can control the forces of nature through Hagal. Now you understand, for instance, in this uh, explanation, why the word hurricane is related with the wind and with the turning of the wind in the earth. This word hurricane comes from the Mayan language, huracán, or huracán, huracán. You see that? The H is in the beginning of the word, is a breath, hurricane, which means turning, or the one-legged force of God which turns. And we know that the Father, the wind, is precisely the one that turns like air or the hurricane. If you observe, the first syllable of hurricane is H-U, hu, which is not only the way that we pronounce the wind, the spirit, in Aztec, but also in Sanskrit. Hue, many times we said, relates to the spirit, to the hurricane, to the forces of the wind, to the Ruach Elohim that the Bible talks about. So, the word human is something very profound in relation with this lecture. Hue is precisely related with the Hagal, with the H, with the breath of God, with the spirit, Hue. And man is Manas, which is represented by the rune man in the Nordic alphabet. That Manas, man, mind, is in the word human. So that's why when they ask us, is uh, the human being existing in the, on the planet Earth? I says, no. The human being doesn't exist. But the people on this planet Earth are called human beings for respect. But they are not human beings yet. If they work with the hue, the spirit, with the wind, with the will of the Father, then they will become a man that think, or a spirit that think, because man is manas, mind. A human is a spirit that thinks, not a brain, not a physicality, like many people think, the atheists that don't believe in the spirit, they are not humans. They are denying themselves correctly. They are not humans. Because a human being is, a, is the one that, whose spirit, the wind, as we explained in this lecture, is acting through the thought, through the word. Because remember that the thoughts that we have express themselves through the word. That's why there is another letter related with the H in Kabbalah which is the letter Het. The letter Het in Kabbalah is similar to the He, with the only difference that it's not as a gap, it's not a space. It's just like that. People that not understand Hebrew, sometimes they mistake the Het with the He. But both letters, as you observe, are pronounced with the throat. He, Het. Hmm? That means that the He becomes a Het. When the air, which is a positive force, the wind, fecundates the throat. When the air fecundates the throat, it is Het. In the Kabbalah or Kabbalistic symbol. This is what you pronounce. That's why in English, 
The H is pronounced like a, a deep breath. Right? Hot. Hot. But in Spanish, the letter H is not pronounced. It's silent. But instead, we pronounce the het, which is <laughs> the sound very strong. But that's the difference between the head and the hay. When you say hay, only you just breathe <sighs> without making any uh, force in your throat. But when you tighten it, <sighs> and then it's the head. That's the difference between the two letters. And behold this in Hebrew. In order to say life, you said hi or haya with het, not with hey, het. And with het is how you write Eve, Hava. Do you see how beautiful it is? And Hava, Eve, is called the mother of the living. And it's written in the gospel, I mean in, in the book of Genesis, that when God breatheth into the nostrils of Adam the breath of Haya, life, the man became a living soul. We say that that life, Hai, that was breathed into the nostrils of Adam, within it was also the letter Aleph, which is the beginning of Adam. And that Adam became a living soul. Through the nostrils enters the life, the head, in our body. So, this is why you find the marvelous symbol of Ezekiel. In Hebrew, in order to <coughs> write the Lord, you write Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yod, which reads Adonai, O Adoni, the Lord, O my Lord, Adoni. Now the name Adonai is precisely the name given to God in the physical plane. That's why in Judaism they said, Baruch Hashem Adonai. Baruch Hashem Adonai means holy or blessed be the name of the Lord. And of course, this is what we have to do. To make blessed, holy, the name of the Lord in our physicality. But really, Many times we explain in many lectures that the physical body is a feminine archetype. Even though if we are males, the physical body is feminine. Because Malkut is feminine. The very bottom of the tree of life. That's why when we call the physical body Mary or Mary Magdalene, we know very well that it's referring to us, physic physically speaking. Every one of us, when we enter into this path, we enter as Mary Magdalene, who was, symbolically speaking, a prostitute, meaning that every one of us had prostituted his, her, their physicality. And we had to learn how to make it holy. Hmm? Baruch Hashem Madonai, blessed, holy be the name of the Lord in us. But the name, the word, is in us when we work with it in the initiation. And then we become Virgin Mary, physically speaking, in relation with the Rune Hagal. When you work in your physicality, in your own matter, mother, then becomes Virgin Mary. And from that Virgin Mary emerges the Logos. The word made flesh. Remember that the Logos was made flesh through the womb of Mary. So this is a work that we have to perform in us. 
This is what Jesus represents. The word made flesh. But remember that Jesus was born from Mary. Jesus didn't come from the air like that. And he says, I am Jesus. No. He was born in the womb of Mary. And grow inside of her womb. To appear. And when he was 12 years old. Who taught what Jesus knew about Kabbalah at that age? It is written in many apocrypha books, gospels, that the master that taught Jesus in his childhood was the angel Baruch. The angel Baruch is related with the tree of life. All the mysteries of the tree of life. The angel Baruch. You may say, but Jesus, of course, was a great initiate. Yes, but he started learning from the angel Baruch. Baruch Hashem Adonai. And that angel was the one that taught Jesus. Kabbalah. And all the mysteries of the Torah. Which are written in the New Gospels, but in a hidden manner. Because Jesus also learned Buddhism, Hinduism, and many other religions, not only Kabbalah. But the first sign that he learned was Kabbalah by, from the angel Baruch. You see, and of course, why? Because his matter, his own particular individual matter, physical body in this way, was virgin, mean chaste. And that's why. Uh, through him, other matters became chaste, holy, or, or other Mary Magdalene's that came, other sinners, learned how to become chaste, how to become masters of the day. And that's why, when you read Adonai, you can also read Adonia. Which is the feminine aspect of Adoni, Adonai. Because indeed, Adonai is an angel. But the archetype works in us too. Archetype is that element that can develop inside of us. Every master outside symbolizes an archetype that we have to develop within. And Adoni, of course, symbolizes the Divine Mother. That control the forces of the elements. We place in the website the first chapter of the book of Ezekiel. But we are going just to mention just in the surface that because if we start explaining that and we already did in other lectures, we will take like another two couple of hours. And I believe that you are already tired. And my throat is also, you know. My own larynx is telling me, okay, you are emitting too many children, right? Too many words. So listen here, the symbol of the star of David, Adonia. The lion symbolizes the fire. The ox, the bull, represents the earth. Above is the air, symbolized by the eagle. And in the middle is the face of Adam, or the angel, that represents the man. The water. So of course. Ezekiel explains there. How the word. He says. I was in the river. Kebar or Hebar. The river Kebar. Which is symbolizing the sexual energy. In the land. Of the Chaldeans. What is the land of the Chaldeans? Well if you take that word. Hebrew word for Chaldeans and search in the dictionary for the meaning of it, you will find that it means devils, phantoms, uh, preachers in the evil way. It means, of course, that when you start there in your sexual force, you find all those evil creatures called Hayot. You see? Hayot. This, every single creature is called Haya, creature. But plural is Hayot. 
which means the four of them. These hayot are inside of us, but not pure. The fire is not pure, the water is not pure, the air is not pure, the earth is not pure. We have to make them pure through the knowledge of the breath and chastity. And this is how they become hayot, ha, ha, kadosh. You see? This is how you say it in Hebrew. Hayot ha kadosh. Hayot life. Ha again. Letter He. The breath and the sound of Aleph, the Trinity. Ha kadosh. Kadosh means holy. The holy creatures. We have to make these creatures holy through alchemy. Hayot ha kadosh. And that's why it's written there in the beginning of that gospel, or I mean that uh, book of Ezekiel, the first chapter, that he was in the land of the Chaldeans, close to the river Kebar, and he heard the word, you see, the word of Jehovah, Yod, He, Bab, He, that is profoundly just by reading that implies a lot. Hmm? And then he describes how the Lord appears with the four creatures. Which are the four elements. He says, for instance, that from the north was coming a wind, a whirling wind. If you understand this with this lecture... The whirling wind, of course, is a hurricane coming from the north. In the north, Kabbalistically speaking, is a pineal gland because the north is Jehovah Elohim in, in Hebrew. And Jehovah Elohim, the north, governs the physical body because Jehovah Elohim, the Holy Spirit, governs the sexual organs and the physical body. That's why it is stated that the God or the physical body, is the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit in the way that we are explaining here. And the Holy Spirit receives the name in the physical body of Adonai or Adonia. Adonia is the wife of the Holy Spirit Bina. In other words, the Holy Spirit Bina, his wife, is your physicality. But the physicality of all the people in the earth is a Mary Magdalene, a prostitute. He needs to learn the doctrine, the word of God, in order to become holy and to marry Jesus, which is the word of God made flesh, symbolically speaking. And this is how the word comes to Ezekiel. You see, all of us, we like to hear the word of God coming into us. But Ezekiel was already an initiate, a prophet. He was not born a prophet. He became a prophet through initiation. And when he was ready, like Jesus was ready in the Jordan, the word of God came and entered into him. In the same Ezekiel, which by the way, is called also the son of man. And he received the word of God in himself. But the whirling wind was coming from the north, above the head, in other words. The whirling wind, the Ruach Elohim, coming inside your body. And he describes these four creatures, how they were entering into him and transforming him. It is how he was seeing the, the wheels and the wings of the creature inside of him. That if you look in the website for the lecture called The World of Yetzirah. There you will find the explanation of the whole chapter of the book of Ezekiel. And where you will understand how the elemental forces of nature enter into your body from the north, from above, when you perform the Run Hagal. That's why this room is marvelous. 
And the retreat that we had a few weeks ago, we performed this rune, as we explained it here, in front of a lake. And we were invoking the God of the elements, of water, air, ether, earth, and fire, all in unison with the Rune Hagal. Everybody was concentrating in the Rune Hagal and turning in the Rune Hagal because when you imagine that Rune, you, make, you have to make a turn. This is how it works with your imagination. And then in your imagination, you are turning the rune and invoking and pronouncing and taking advantage of the forces of nature. You can do that, whether in the beach or uh, the shore of the river, lake, or in the forest. But it's good if you do it close to the water. Because the water, of course, is the element that carries all these forces. Water is from above, water is from below. Do you have questions? The, uh, the mantra la 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 for astral projection, can you mention how that uh, relates to the ethers uh, and reflectors? The question is how the mantra la la uh, relate to this. You know, there is, a, there is a mantra that you pronounce in order to project yourself astrally into the fifth dimension. And for that you pronounce la ras. It is obviously related with the two mantras there. La from the earth, ra from the fire. La, of course, is your physical body. You are utilizing the fire of your physical body because after that you can pronounce yes, la ras. And that mantra manipulate the forces of your body which is the fire ra of your la, in order to attract the forces of the astral and to project you out of your body consciously. It's called astral projection. Do you have another question? Yes? The air that enters through your lungs. The question is, I want to repeat because maybe you didn't hear. If the throat is the mother and the word is the father, who, I mean, is the son. I mean, the, the throat, the larynx, is the mother, is the uterus. The word is the son. So who is the father? I said, obviously, the air. Aleph. The hurricane that enters through your nose, represented by Keter. So in other words, the air fecundates the throat when you breathe. This is how you understand that God breatheth into your nostrils and put it into yourself, into, through your nostrils, the breath that becomes a living soul. And Adam became a living soul. Chaya. Nefesh Chaya. Soul, nefesh is soul. So that, of course, is that. Remember always, the father is represented by the wind. That's why when we talk about Keter, the first sephira of the tree of life, has no shape, has no form. It's, it's, it's abstract. It's the air. It's Aleph. The head of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is the Aleph. And if you observe... In ancient Hebrew letters, the letter Aleph was made like an A as well, Latin A, but lying down, like that. This is how you made Aleph in ancient times, which is a really a lying down A. So that is the, the breath, the breath of God, which is precisely represented by the tongue of Tonatiu, that breath is the father that enters into your lungs and fecundates the throat in order for the word, the son, to be born. Subjectively speaking, what are you creating through your larynx? Monsters? Are you lying? Do you realize now why it is said you shall not lie? 
because you are utilizing the truth, which is God, through your lungs and pronouncing, making monsters, lies. And this is precisely this humanity, utilizing the word in the wrong way, making lies through the media, gossiping, utilizing the word in the wrong way. So what type of children do you have? What type of words do you pronounce, in other words? You, have to have, you want to have the, God, the, the, the Son of God within you. Well, you have to make of your mother Mary, a virgin Mary. Another question? Yeah. The question is also through the thoughts, because Netzach is the air. Netzach is a word that derives from the Hebrew Metzach, which means forehead, the mind. Obviously, in the brain, as we explain, is the H and the A. Ha, the mantra of the ether. So, in which way are you utilizing your brain, your thoughts? What type of thoughts do you have? Do you have idols in your head? You see? Do not worship any other Elohim, says the, God, uh, the Bible. The only Elohim that you have to worship is the one that comes from above, the will of God. But even in your head, you have many theories. It's a very good word, theory, you know, that comes now into my mind. Theos means God. Theory means the way in which you make of your thoughts a God, an idol, in other words. And if you pronounce those theories and pronounce incoherent words, you are worshiping idols even if you don't have any symbol of other religion in your home. Another question there? Can you explain how manifestation of imbalance in the arms, hands, and lungs is related to Gemini? Well, uh, it is, how do I explain the unbalance that you have in your lungs, in your arms, and your hands in relation with the sign of Gemini? The son of Gemini uh, obviously it relates to the duality of the shoulders, arms, hands, and lungs. It's in relation with the wrong use of the duality. The two opposite forces. Remember that Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Many other lectures told you that Mercury relates to the air, to the lungs. That's why the Ruach Elohim that was hovering in the beginning upon the waters, that's Mercury. Raphael, if you want, the God of Mercury or the Archangel Raphael, the God of Medicine. So, how is your Ruach Elohim, that spirit, that Mercury, working in you? Mercury is also related with a sexual force in your sexual glands, which is a brute Mercury. The deformity or problem that you have in your shoulders, arms, hands, and lungs relate to the wrong use of the word, the wrong use of the breath, the Ruach Elohim, not only through your throat, but in the sexual force too. And the way in which you utilize your mind in a very mistaken way. All of us suffer from that, not only if we are not from the son of Gemini. But remember always the duality of your lungs, hands, etc., Remember that the hands are will, the will. Remember that the book of Revelation states that the sign of the beast, 666, was in the forehead and in the hands. The way you think, the way you act with your hands. Your will, in other words, utilized in the wrong way. In synthesis, the beast, 666, 
is inside of us. It's not outside. Every single person in this planet Earth carries the big 666 inside. Do you have another question? No questions here. Well, Baruch Hashem Madonai, holy and blessed be the name of the Lord. Remember that inside your body. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.